good morning everybody good afternoon good evening whatever time you are watching this or rather listening to this because it's going to be an audio message um if you are new here my name is young and uh, please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and turn on your notification so that you'll be notified because you be rest assured there are lots and lots of lots of more messages to come some in forms of videos some in forms of audios like this one but please do subscribe and do stay with us become part of our warrior group um and give your life a meaning you know so it's very important really to be in the things of god it's very important i will definitely leave um, a link to my social media platforms because there is a video specially designed for the young people you know yeah i will leave a link below or rather my information then you just can go watch it is very important but today the title oh and to my faithful and returning subscribers all the warriors that are back to to watch and listen to this message thank you very much for coming back you are highly highly appreciated and may god continue to bless you and continue to fill your lives with love and joy and wisdom and all the good things that you pray for you know all the desires of your heart i truly truly love and appreciate every one of you please share comment you know share this message with someone who might need to hear it um with family members and any other messages that you see on our page here and you feel like someone really needs to hear this please feel free to share feel free to comment you know your comments are appreciated and let's get right into it um from the title of today's message as you saw is uh, titled the hard truth because I believe that a lot of people might be uncomfortable with what I'm about to say, uh, might be confronted, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for anything. It's going to be rather a long message, or if it's too long, I might make it into like a whole part one, part two thing. But let's see how much we can cover in, yeah. So let's get right into it. You know, many of us suffer from what we call shallow Christianity. You know, what do I mean when I say we suffer from sh shallow Christianity? We have, you know, like the commitment we have to God or for God is rather shallow. It's, it, it's not, you know, the Bible says that David was a man after the heart of God, you know, um, and I, and, and, and I really feel like this generation, the Christianity of this generation is not the type that is after the heart of God. You know, we are not after the heart of God. We are after um, glory. We want fame. We want people to clap hands for us. We do things in the house of God. You know, we have people in the house of God who do things because they want people to clap for them, because they want... Um, People to be like, oh, brother John, that that was good. Oh, but this, that, what, that, what, that. That is beautiful to receive. You know, it's it it shows that people are taking notice of what the Lord is doing in your life. But at times, you you find people who get that and they grow a big head and they start going after the glory. And now it's no longer about giving God the glory, but about giving themselves glory. You know, so a lot of us suffer from this shallow Christianity um because we are focused on god i mean we are focused on men instead of god because you want to impress men you want to create an image for yourself in the eyes of men and in the sight of men instead of really trying to create yes uh, an image in the sight of god to make sure that god is pleased with what you are doing you know um because everybody wants to show off their own glory everybody wants to show off that i got a good voice everybody wants to show off that um, I can preach. Everybody wants to show that, oh, I can also minister. I can also prophesy. I can also pray in tongues. I can also do all these things. And it's no longer about, I'm going to, I want to give God the glory. I want to make sure that I'm preaching the message of God with love so that the people of God may hear. That is why a lot of us preach, but the people are not transformed, but the people are not changed because our hearts are not in the right posture, because we are not preaching so that the people are redeemed on and are made right with god we are preaching because we want them to see oh that's a powerful man of god that's a powerful woman of god you know that is the agenda behind it and you know i heard somewhere and i was told somewhere by a man of god that god is not moved 
by your actions, but is moved by your heart. Where is your heart? That is what moves God. That is what moves heaven to move on your behalf and to sort of, you know, defend you and move on your behalf. Is your heart where your heart lies? A lot of us, our hearts do not lie with God. A lot of us, our hearts do not lie or do not are not after God. Let me say rather, you know, we are not after the heart of God, but we are after the glory that men can offer. We are not after the to worship God. We are not after that. You know, we are not after that. We want to give ourselves glory. We want to make a name for ourselves. We want to be famous. And you forget who you are really doing it for. You forget who you are really doing it for. And it's very important that really we pray for the eyes, for our eyes to be opened that we may know the hope of our calling. It's very important. A lot of people are lost. Even great men of God stand in front of the uh, pulpit and they preach the word. But the people in the congregation are not moved because you, you don't have the Holy Spirit moving on the inside of you to minister to the people. Because the one thing I always say is that we as ministers of the word, we only we are just bad vessels. The moment you allow God to move on the inside of you, and to minister because it is God who does the ministering it is God who does the ministering even every time I have to minister in church I have to lead a song in church because me myself I know I cannot deliver the anointing of God so I tell God that as much as you've anointed me I have I really have nothing to say to your people so come and work and the Holy Ghost just takes over the Holy Ghost just takes over and I just and, I, and he just sings and ministers to his people, you know, and he leads them into salvation. It's very beautiful once you allow God to work on the inside of you, you know. And the thing you got to understand is that as a minister, you are a soldier. You are a soldier. Automatically, as a Christian, you are a soldier. You are fighting the battle for God. Because the Bible says that the fight that we fight is not against flesh and blood, but against... Uh, um, powers and rulers and you know principalities of this world that is what the bible says meaning that as a christian you are fighting there is a fight to be fought and to be won but the beauty of being a christian is that you have assured victory hold on let me take a sip of my coffee you have you have assured victory you have assured victory you gotta understand that you have assured victory you are a soldier so your duty, you know, I, I love that beautiful verse. Um, let me quickly find it for you. That says that, go forth and make disciples of all nations. Go forth and make disciples of all nations. I love that verse so much. I love it so much. Because, hold on, let me mute that. Because it shows us what our sole responsibility is as Christians and as children of God you know it shows us what our souls uh, 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 responsibility is it shows us you know um, it's in the book of um, I believe Matthew um, Matthew 28 19 to 20 it says go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit and teaching them to, you know it, it, it's so beautiful that shows that your sole responsibility is to win souls for god is to preach the word of god is to preach the word of god preach the word of god and, I will, and like I said in the beginning, I will leave a link. There is a beautiful video that um, I will soon be making. And I don't want anybody to miss on it. So please go ensure that if, if because, yeah, obviously, but go check, out, go check it out. It's a beautiful video that I'll be making. You know that it's rather, I'm rather going to upload there on my Instagram page. It's a beautiful If you are young or even if you are, you know, an uh, adult or you are elderly, it's beautiful. Go and watch it. We really need to be in the things of God. So your sole responsibility is to ensure that you make disciples of all nations. You know, because in the in 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 
in Christianity, there are principles to be followed. There are principles to be followed. Now, many of us, we pray and cry power, power, power in the name of Jesus, but you are not following the principality, the, the, no, sorry, the, the principles of the kingdom. You've signed up to be part of the kingdom. Nobody forced you, nobody held your neck and said, be a Christian. The Holy Spirit ministered to you and you chose to listen to the voice of the Father and you joined the, the, the kingdom. Therefore, you follow the principles. You don't come here and make up your own rules. You don't come here and, ma and start making that there are sins that are acceptable and sins that are not acceptable just because you are doing the sins. Because many of us sit there and think highly of ourselves. Just a minute. And we think highly of ourselves. Because you feel like, oh, I know how to pray in tongues. Oh, I know how to do what? That don't matter. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Read that Bible verse, Matthew 28, chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Where does your heart lie with God? Where does your heart lie with God? That's the question I'm going to ask you. And you should ask yourself, where does your heart lie? Because David was the man after, uh, after God's heart. And we should really pray for that kind of faith, that kind of love, that we don't do, that we don't sin because, oh, I'm waiting for a promotion, I can't sin, or I'm waiting for money, I can't sin. You stop sinning because you understand that it will hurt the heart of your father. It will break the heart of your father. It will hurt my Jesus. I pray to get that. I pray to get at that level where I'm going to be like, I'm not going to do it. It will hurt my father because of the love I carry. You know, the Bible says in the book of um, Matthew um, 6.33, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you, meaning that your focus should be God. Guys, these material things that we have are benefits of being in Christ. The money is a benefit. The car, the house, the job, the luxury life, it is a benefit. It is not the source. Because I don't know about you, but I would rather be connected to the source than just want to have the benefits. Because I can't say I'm offered, I'm offered to grow my own tree of these fruits that I want and then I choose to say no it's fine just keep the tree at your house and I'll just come and collect the fruits how pathetic and sad is that how pathetic and sad is that Matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of God Seek ye first the seek ye first the kingdom of God. Meaning that your heart should be directed to God. Nothing else, nothing less, nothing more, but to God. But to God. Because all of this will pass away. When the rapture of the church comes. There are people that will be left here. You have worked and worked and worked and worked and money and you leave the money here for other people to enjoy. I would rather have that money. I would rather have that money and invest it in the things of God. Because I know it's going to come back anyway, but I would rather invest it there so that I don't, like me, I keep telling people, me, my money, I'm, I'm going to enjoy my money. 
Yes, I'm going to invest. I'm going to have business. I'm going to have that. But I will invest most of my money. It will be for God. Because it's not even mine anyway. Because the Lord told me that. It's not even something that someone else told me. The Lord told me himself that the monies. Yes, I'm going to bless you with money. But remember that it's not yours. It's so that my people do not suffer. So that I will take care of my people through you. So I know that when I get money here, in whatever form, I know it's not for me. It's for a greater cause. Guys, let us be after the heart of God. Follow the principles of the kingdom. And you will see how God's power will be manifested in your life. The power of God will be manifested in your life. Because Christianity is about one thing. And it's pleasing God. I cannot tell you anything else. Christianity is about pleasing God. Because if God is not pleased with your actions. Then you are not a Christian. You can't call yourself a Christian. Fix yourself. Repent and live right. Repent and live right. Christianity, I, that is what Christianity is in one, one simple way, is pleasing God. So if you're out there and you're a new Christian, I encourage you right now, evaluate yourself, check yourself. Are my ways, are my actions pleasing to the Father? That is when you know that you're truly serving God. If your actions are in alignment with his ways. Because he has his ways. That is thing. There is nothing the Bible doesn't. The Bible gives us all the guidance we need. All the guidance we need. It gives it to us. So check yourself. Check yourself. Because it's all about pleasing God. Let's look at the book of Philippians. Um... Philippians 3 7. Hold on, let me open my Bible. Philippians 3 7. Just a minute. Philippians 3 7. It says, But uh, what things were gained to me? Those I, yeah, but what things were gained to me? Those I counted lost for Christ. Okay, maybe there's a different translation. Hold on. Because this one is a bit confusing. But just to explain, maybe you can read it in a different translation. Because right with me here, I have the King James. But when you read it, you will see that... That really, the Bible speaks of... The Bible here speaks of really being able to suffer for Christ. Being able to suffer for God. That is what, basically, that is what I'm getting here. I don't know if maybe you might be getting a different revelation. Is basically being able to suffer for Christ. Because I always think to myself that, okay, hold on. If God was willing to put aside his glory and um, to put aside his glory and um, come and die for me, what more can I do for him? It's just, I'm able to lay down it, to lay it all down. I pray to get to that level where I'm just able to lay it all down before him and say, Father, here it is. Here it is. Do my life as you, you know, just do with my life whatever it is you want. Do with my life as you please. It is yours. I pray to get to that level. But I think we'll take that another time because now I feel like the video is long, the audio is long. So we'll take that in part two. So definitely do be expecting a part two. If you've watched uh, till at this point, if you're still with me here, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate you and I just love you. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. Please do share this message with friends because I do believe there are a lot of people who really need to hear this message. And definitely do encourage them to await 
um, the, the, the part two that I will definitely be bringing. And uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And I love you all. Thank you all for sitting and listening. Thank you all for really choosing to listen to what the Lord has prepared for you through me. And I love you all. God bless.